Hi, I'm Claudia Zelazny, Director of Lifestyle Programming at Legacy Performance Center in Dallas. And I'm talking with Brandon Pollard, who is one of the founders of the Texas Honey Bee Guild. He presented uh, information tonight for a group of our clients about being the bridge for truth in agriculture. So how many times have you been stunned? More than I can count, um, but a lot less than you'd think. Um, you, you know, bees, uh, that's one of the, th being a responsible beekeeper, you know, bees, uh, you know, I'm not sure if the audience understands, some people may know or may not, but, you know, when bees sting, they lose their life, so they give, they give their life uh, for a, a little bee sting, so as a beekeeper, you want to do everything that you can, sing, you're trying to keep as many bees inside that hive as you can, you want to avoid the bees feeling like they need to defend themselves, so the more you can minimize uh, the bee stings, the more you can minimize the mortality rate in your beehive. So, uh, as a beekeeper, you're very vigilant and you know being you know you very smooth and very deliberate when you're in around the bees. Just you know very quiet. You don't want to because they communicate with pheromones. You know you don't want to introduce too many smells and you know have some really strong odors they're introducing in while you're working the bees. So there's a lot you know it's, it is animal husbandry. So there's kind of a lot of artistry involved in just uh, working with the bees and making sure that you're not putting them to their death. So besides scent, would noise be something Yeah, frequency and vibrations, yeah. I mean, anytime you're, uh, especially with lawn mowers or weed eaters, I mean, those are f just frequencies that can just uh, upset the most docile of bee colonies. So. But you're actually being a beekeeper in an urban environment. Yes. So how does that impact that? Because there's noise everywhere. We, we have noise pollution. Yeah, um, and I guess maybe for the bees, and I mean, of course, I can only you know, speak for the bees anthropomorphically, and so for me, uh, I mean, I would think that it's almost, it maybe would be like a white noise issue. I mean, I don't notice, you know, with our bees uh, on top of a, a, of a terrace level of, of um, right in the middle of all the skyscrapers of downtown Dallas, um, do I notice their activity to be any different than we have, that we have bees in a much more quieter location that runs organics that's outside of, you know, the city limits with um, much less uh, noise pollution, but um, the you know. the uh, building that he's talking about is the Fairmount Hotel in downtown Dallas. They have a rose garden, and Brandon and Susan have a hive that they tend there, which I think is really fascinating. Yeah, and, the, and one of the exciting stories about that is that they used to have two swimming pools, and they decided that two swimming pools was too many, so they filled in one of the swimming pools and planted a garden. So for us that are you know very. Uh, ecologically conscious and you know green and conservation and education and planting more seeds I mean for us it was already a victory story before we got there so, so to be how able to did you sell them on the idea of bees they came after us really? mm -hmm. and actually um, interestingly enough um, part of the uh, I believe it's a Canadian based company um, and it's it, they have a, a hotel chain that's throughout the world um, and they don't have very many hotels but the hotels that they do have are you know prime um, so they do actually have several of the Fairmont hotels. Um, it's part of their uh, kind of corporate policy of, of, of having a certain amount of monies and space that they dedicate uh, towards, you know, conservation and just things that are green and things that grow. So, Well, one of the things that comes to mind when you're talking about the level of noise and a certain quiet and calmness that you have to have around a hive you know, um, you were talking today about the almond growers yes. that are people from Florida, from the East Coast, are transporting hives on flatbed trucks to California. What does this do to the to the bee in the hive? To be on this truck in this kind of environment, is that unsettling? Do you have to, when you get to the new place, to kind of have to re? Calm the bees down. I mean, I don't. What what happens when you transport bees like that? Well, from the standpoint of the, the vitality and the vigor at which bees go about their business, I mean, it doesn't mean one difference to them. I mean, they're going to do what they do no matter where you put them. Um, but certainly for me, I mean, I have, I have loaded a, a flatbed truck full of bees, and I've seen some of those bees. And from just uh, an, an observer of, of bees and just their vitality and their exuberance and their health, um, some of the healthiest bees I've ever seen have been some of these bees that are on these large pollination circuits when they're just going from crop to crop to crop. 
Um, however, because of the diversity of the pollen they're getting. Well, the, well, in in some in some situations they're not getting a diverse uh, diversified pollen and nectar source, you know, because they're just going from crop to crop, and there's no uh, there's Same no crop. variety. Um, um, like I was saying, I, I mean, I have seen where these bees are just incredibly wonderful and prolific and docile and just, I mean, some of the most amazing bee colonies that I've seen are on some of these pollination circuits. But it's because of the level of interaction with, the, you know, the beekeeper and the bees and their ability to adjust and, you know, to this industrial agricultural complex that we have that I think is a major problem. Um, but certainly in order to feed all the mouths that we have, we have to have those bees go on those trucks to do that in order for us to have all that stuff showing up at the supermarket. I mean, you can imagine if you go to the supermarket and 90 plus different fruits and vegetables just totally disappear, or maybe you go to your favorite section and it's just not there. Well, um, in order for us to have that in all these different supermarkets all across the world, we have to have those bees doing that. So it's a necessary... It's a necessary evil, um, but we do need to do what we can to get it back down to community and neighborhood um, and that's the whole concept of, of slow food, of slow money, and in our case slow money. Brandon, we have viewers from all over the world, so if they want to get in touch with you, how would they go about doing that? Well, if you are a person that's interested in taking advantage of some of the amazing products from Beehive, um, I would say um, uh, two things, you know, get thee to a farmer's market uh, because um, any reputable farmer's market will have a beekeeper there. Um, the other thing I would say would be to get thee to a bee club, which uh, I would say in, in most cases, uh, you know, within I would say a hundred miles, you would be able to find a bee club somewhere in and around where you're living and breathing all the time where you can find out a little bit more about bees and beekeeping and some of these uh, amazing things that you should have in your cupboard because a cure is in the cupboard.